Our next speaker is Michael Scott of Archaeology, He's speaking on the topic of using stable isotope analysis to examine diet and breastfeeding at the Chalcolithic site of Segabi, Iran. Thank you. All right, so this is my honors project. We have the thing? Yeah. Uh, which, as you said, involves the use of stable isotope analysis to examine diet and breastfeeding at a uh, site in Iran. Sega B is located in the west central Zagros mountain region of Iran. It was originally excavated in the early 70s uh, by the Royal Ontario Museum. Compared to other sites in the region, uh, Sega B is unusual because most sites are typically made up of one very large mound. However, Sega B is comprised of seven very small mounds. Uh, this is important because the mounds were originally argued to be representative of different periods of occupation mostly through the varied forms of architecture, material culture, and faunal assemblages. The earliest date for the site is in the small mound on the north side of this map, and ranges between 5837 to 5659 BC. There are also a range of radiocarbon dates for the large mound on the bottom, which place it between 4680 and 3662 BC. Ceramic seriation for this site places all the other mounds in a very broad category in the Chalcolithic, between 4500 and 3500 BC. Before I talk about what I did, I'd like to quickly introduce stable isotope analysis, which archaeologists use to gain a general sense of diet at sites. It involves, as I performed it, the measurement of the isotope composition of human bone collagen, which is reflective of the dietary protein consumed from plants and animals. The figure that I've included provides a very broad categorization of uh, consumer groups based on their stable isotope measurements. Carbon stable isotope analysis is able to distinguish the proportion of C3 versus C4 plants in diet, with C3 plants resulting in lower carbon isotope values and C4 plants in higher values. Nitrogen isotope analysis provides the ability to determine the amount of animal protein in diet. This is because as animals are consumed, nitrogen isotopes fractionate in such a way that an increase around three parts per mil is seen with each step upwards in the food chain. So my project involved doing this analysis on 24 human individuals from the site and one faunal remain. My reason for doing this is essentially because there is extremely little dietary information for the site, and also because in general, human isotope data for archeological context in Iran is extremely rare. It should be noted that all of the individuals being studied in this project are juveniles and infants which lends itself to studying breastfeeding with this population. This is because the nitrogen isotope values of breastfeeding children will typically be a trophic level above that of their mothers, given that their mothers are the source of their dietary protein. Uh, the individuals aged 40 weeks from conception or earlier are being considered in the context of having their mother's isotopic values. Uh, they're also considered perinatal, meaning that they died around the time of death, or they died around the time of birth. It's important to note that the differences being assessed in stable isotope values between the groups are between individuals that are perinatal and those that died after birth, being referred to as postnatal. In terms of my results, uh, it's fairly simple if you understand these values. The carbon isotope measurements place a uh, subsistence at the site as being predominantly focused on C3 plants, uh, usual agriculture crops or agricultural products. Uh, in terms of nitrogen isotope values, the humans sit well above our one terrestrial herbivore, which suggests that they were subsisting on a large amount of animal products. As far as breastfeeding is concerned, uh, the nitrogen isotope values of postnatal individuals is significantly higher than those of the perinatal individuals, uh, which is substantial evidence that the children were being breastfed, likely up to at least one year of age. Sometimes, with, uh, when looking at carbon stable isotope measurements in infant populations, uh, similar to nitrogen isotope measurements, an increase can be seen. Visually, this appears to be something that might have been happening in this population. Uh, however, there is no statistically significant difference between perinatal and postnatal values. So, in terms of where I plan to take my research over the next month before I have to submit it, um, 
I'm going to look more into differences in stable isotope measurements between burial locations, as well as further examine the overall environment of the site uh, and judge how that might have contributed to these values. Thank you.